Welcome to 60 Seconds with KG. We are on the extended version, uh, episode three of my deep dive into five out. And this will kind of wrap up my thoughts on five out dribble drive. Uh, so just a couple things to talk about before we get rolling on today's stuff. You know, in the first two episodes, episode one and episode two, we really covered, you know, the five out entries uh, from a traditional four out dribble drive into five out. So again, everybody wants to know, can I run dribble drive with five out? And some of the options we talked about was utilizing the chin series, utilizing horns, utilizing some different alignments. I think that's often overlooked by coaches, changing your alignment to start your offense, not your traditional four out, but five out, but not even the traditional five out with your alignment. Uh, we also talked about using the elbow flash and the post flash. So if you wanted to dive back into episode one and episode two to see that uh, high post flash. And again, we called that our razor series, the 41 series and the razor series. So just a recap as we dive into today's stuff, which I'd like to show you some quick hitters, some entries into the five out and talk about some of the things that happen when you're running five out dribble drive. As we look at the basketball diagrams now, just to kind of go over some stuff. As we look here, uh, some action that I really like to get going into my five out dribble drive is again, we talked about your traditional rim runner, wherever that four, again, there's your traditional alignment for dribble drive and then kind of morphing that. So the first action we'll talk about uh, is a quick hit entry into a five out is just part of the razor series. And I showed some of that last week. And again, just a quick post flash one to four. And now we've got our five out alignment. And now I quickly reverse it to my five who traditionally for me is my best right-handed driver. And then we'll go ahead and from there with my right-handed driver, I really just like to wave my four out, blur screen uh, right off there and let that five go. And now we've got our one and our two spaced. Three is condensing. And again, you can decide my three, I wanna lift them and get four all the way to the deep corner because I wanna try to hide them there. Or maybe your four is very multi-purpose player and you can go. The one thing you have to remember, I think about five out DDM, is every once in a while, uh, we've got to probably get and have happen a negative pass. You know, Wahlberg always talked about only positive kickbacks. The one thing about having that extra player on the perimeter, you may end up with a negative kick up occasionally. And again, you try not to get them. We'd love to see one really start coming behind here and get at least a positive or five with an extra half dribble. Um, but those do happen. And again, I really like this. This is kind of a take off of our wave action. Okay, this is where we have a four that's comfortable catching and reversing and getting out of the way. And now you're in it. You've seen quite a few quick hitters in the NCAA tournament that look very much like this. Very simple, get out of the way. I know Louisville women with Jeff Waltz run something like this. You saw the Loyola men do a lot of stuff from this post flash action. Okay. Next action I'd like to talk to you about is uh, another way to lift your four out besides the razor flash. And again, that's my word for it, borrowed from Mike Neighbors, Arkansas razor backs. So I used razor series. And again, we're in our four out alignment. And again, we have a kid that runs the rim, gets out. I really like this as a way to get out. It's similar to my wave action, but instead of a one, five, three, we'll, we'll take our four and flash them up right here uh, and go right there and get into that alignment. And now we'll wave the one out, lift the three a little, and then we'll boomerang it right back to the five. And now we're downhill with our best right-handed driver attacking, attacking with a shooter in the corner. And you could see our other alignment now, maybe one has gone all the way deep corner, three is lifted a little, and again, four, is now just looking at, and again, this is what I call my Novak spacing with three on this side and a two man game over here where we might have a back door cut on an overplay. If X2 is flat, we might lift and get your traditional kick up. 
and then we get going again. And this really, if you've got a four that can shoot it, now this is a great chance just to sneak behind here and get a wide open three with an X four that may not be comfortable guarding on the perimeter. And again, you can see as we space around, the two man is now there, the four is kind of spaced beyond it. And now we have, in this case, our one and our three space for shooters. But again, remember, with that extra player on the perimeter, your spacing sometimes isn't great, but if you can start it with some action, and I talked about that with the difference between starting in five out where you have the small gaps and changing your alignment. And here I changed my alignment with an entry, a four flashing, and they become part of my five out on the perimeter. Very simple action, especially for you that are more traditional dribble drive oriented, and you're looking for a little tweak or a little wrinkle. Then the last one I'd like to show you is a really nice quick hitter uh, out of the Razor series that I haven't showed before that I'm going to show today out of a post flash. Again, I'm just going to, you know, with my Razor series, I still have a rim runner. I still want to get that. I still want to try to wear out the opponent's big by running 94 feet. Um, and again, you, you know, you could, you could do a Mike Budenholzer and put five spots on the perimeter and just fill those spots if you don't want to get, get, or get away from your rim runner. Uh, I still want to get that once in a while. I think especially when you've got a four that really is an effort kid and can get those for you and, and put pressure on the other uh, X4 to run the rim with you. Uh, we're going to go here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to flash right to the top and our five is going to space away. And again, in our entry, and again, this can go either way. You know, we could, we could do it from the other side. Typically teams run it to the right side, but we could do a one, five entry four flash to that side and we could go there. Okay. So the ball now is at the top. Our one is here. Our five is spaced. Three is here. Two is here. And now we'll start this, what we call as part of our down series. And again, if you look at episode episode one and two, I posted a couple things with those on my Twitter that had some diagrams of the up down. So a down action for us would be right here because we're going to go one down. This time we reject and try to get something cheap right here. Okay, again, looking for something cheap right there. If we don't have it, two is going to continue. One pops back. Those of you that have run this action before know that is a great way to get a wide open three. Just, just to reject it, pop back, and you're going to send it right back there. So this is some strong side action. And now in the last part, our one has it, and our five. And again, for us, this is really tough to guard because we've got a pretty athletic five whose, whose defender is used to guarding different actions, maybe attacking rather than some shuffle cut action, which is kind of a, it's almost a modified flex shuffle. But what we'll do there is that two will come through right there. Five's gonna go under. We're gonna look for a lay-in right here. And then we're gonna go traditional screen the screen or wherever X2 is. Again, you're gonna send your guy down. And we always talk about head hunting on that one and pop your two right to the top. So some really good options here. We've got a lay-in for the five. Uh, we've got a three-pointer up top. And again, these are all part of taking your traditional four out dribble drive motion, making it five out realizing there will be less space. But again, if you start it with something and enter with something that will, that will help alleviate that issue, I think you'll be just fine running five out dribble drive with almost essentially the same rules of kickups, kickbacks. Occasionally you're gonna get that negative pass versus a positive pass because of the sheer numbers on the perimeter. I really like it. We run it quite a bit when we have our downsized four on the floor. When we have our traditional lineup, our thunder lineup, we call that thunder and lightning. Uh, we have our traditional four out. So it's an easy way. I think it's a really easy way to do it. And just again, as, as terminology, thunder would be for us, our traditional four out. And then when we go lightning group, and I used to use this in high school all the time when I played two posts versus one post. Now it's, it's one post or no posts. This would be our five out uh, dribble drive motion. Hopefully you got something from that. Good luck, coaches.